everybody. Donna Woods with Photonic Health and another Health Made Simple. And today, my special guest is Deb Taubert. Deb and I and our company go way back. Deb, actually, yes, I think you are our longest standing ambassador. Um, Seriously? Oh. <laughs> seriously, yes. Um, yes. You know, we started our company in 2009 and we met Deb like immediately, I think right away or right around there. Um, yep, you were and, in Wisconsin. Yep. yep, in Wisconsin. And so Deb is, I'm super excited because even though um, we haven't spoken in person in a very long time, it's sort of fun to be able to catch up with you and see how how far we've all come on this journey. Um, yeah. And so um, Deb specializes, she is a -A -A -H -H -P. Is she is an experienced holistic healthcare practitioner for animals with an orientation based in traditional Chinese medicine and acupressure. And she also holds a certification, one of only three in the United States, um, from Animal Psych Aromatica. And that has to do with utilizing essential oils, but from a uh, emotional perspective. So I want to hear more about that. Um, and she continues to further her in education wherever she can, and I know that. And she was just awarded a holistic pet health coach certification from Dr. Ruth Roberts. So yes, Deb, welcome. Exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again, Donna. Good so to see I you had too. no idea we were, I was the longest standing ambassador. And I mean, I still promote your products and I still think they work super well. I mean, mm -hmm. I use them on my horses, my cats, my dogs and re the rescue. I help support, you know, over and over. I see the results. Right. Well, I think it's a run between you and Pat Pirelli, actually. So <laughs> really? that, that's a good race, right? <laughs> that's a good race. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's I a good to, race. Gosh, do you have what year I signed up? I, I don't. Not off the top of my head, but I know that my yeah. team has it somewhere. Yeah. I would just, yeah. I think because yeah. I've been doing this, my business since this business since 2000 seven and I think at that time I already had my first original red light right um, which still works it still works right <laughs> yeah still, still yeah. works good <laughs> it does it just it. doesn't have the shield on it so I don't use it as much as the others but oh yeah it still works and I tell people that you know over and over this light still works this is the very first one it's been stepped on it's been thrown across the barn it's landed on cement the horses have stepped on it and it still works so it still works, right? It it is holding up like we designed it to do. Um, yeah. So yay, yeah, awesome. I love that. So Deb, yeah. tell me a little bit about. Tell me a little bit about the most common thing that you get as a holistic professional. What question do you find yourself answering the most? Like, what is the biggest issue that you come across or that people reach out to you for? Um, allergies or itching. Definitely those. That's the top thing that, you know, and, and it can stem from different um, reasons why they're itching. But that is absolutely the biggest um, in dogs and, you know, and in cats and followed closely by probably um diarrhea or soft you know stool soft stool that ah, just never firms up digestive issues yes which all actually both of those stem from the same thing and what gut would that be the uh gut microbiome the and the uh, imbalance in the gut microbiome yes so, yep yes awesome and so um so as a practitioner like give me a picture um Give me a picture like how does this how does this work and what do you do because it sort of sounds like a lot of people listening would be like okay well i have essential oils and i have a red light so what is she doing differently or how is she like how is she incorporating these differently or what is she doing that um has she has a business number one and number two that she's getting different results 
So, I mean, what if I saw if a client yeah. came in or came yeah. to the office or, okay, or, and I also do, you know, on hand, in hand, or they come to the office, but I do phone consult and Zoom consult yep. also. So I don't always have hands on, but, um, right. well, basically they, you know, a questionnaire is filled out to let me know what they, you know, the real concern for the parent that parent is what is the the thing that seems to be bothering them most about what's going on and it may not be what i think is the the you know the biggest concern but it is what is most bothersome to them and that's where i always you know start there could be multiple things going on but um i you know go through the questionnaire with them and then um if i do see have them here with me I do a hands-on um, um, to see what acupressure points seem to be out of balance for me. Um, too, too warm, too cool. I just saw a dog this morning that the stomach, um, stomach 36 on the yeah. knee. So I've never felt that before where it was like really, really cool. I just going right. down the body right there, really cool. And I've never felt, but he's on Chinese herbs and we've got him too cool. We got his stomach too cool <laughs> ah so, so you um, utilize you utilize chinese herbs in your practice as well i do i do and my awesome. mainstay i started out with essential oils that's what actually got me a rolling that certification but i and i still do use them but not as much as i used to um because i use also homeopathy um right. homeopathy and essential oils don't go well together um Essential oils negate the healing properties of homeopathy often, especially the stronger smelling ones. So I don't use them um, as much together as I used to, but I still, essential oils is still my first love. Yeah. But now more so I'm using acupressure with red light or, you know, the essential pad or the professional pad. I yep. have them all. And um, with homeopathy, with Chinese herbs and... Um, to rebalance the energy lines of the meridians in the body. So that's the basic big um, picture. I help the client um, help put together a package for the client that is doable for them, including diet modification, um, teaching them to cook for whatever's going on and looking at you know the gut microbiome and and it's it's a big picture and correct for the, the start it's a huge picture actually but i'm um, putting together a lifestyle modification program with these different modalities that i have you know to bring the the um, four-legged family member back to vitality and wellness and nice. um, at whatever stage of life they're at yeah. so i love that i love that because so often we we have people come to us and they want treatment for or a protocol for a very specific thing and it's really challenging because it's everything's connect everything is connected and yeah you yeah. know and it's yeah. something as simple as water like you know we've got a little dog like a little little 15 pound thing and it's our first time having that small of a dog and you know they they have their own unique challenges like from a health perspective she's a frenchie and so they're they're known like they're notorious for stomach issues and oh yes infections and oh. you name it and um something as simple as changing their water from well water to distilled water you would not think makes a difference but it makes a huge difference they i suppose depending on what's in that well water if it's high, high, high iron etc or too high in minerals or, right yeah 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 you know, yeah so it's all about the minerals so i love the fact that you're you put together basically a program of here mm -hmm. this is what you need to do like it's not just here's a salve go put it on or you know take benadryl and you know the itching will go away and you just have right. to keep them on benadryl right. forever because that's not healthy um I love that you're looking at the whole picture. So can you talk a little bit more about how you look at their gut microbiome? Um, oh, and I should mention too, that I often look at tongues. The tongue, tongue yep. in Chinese medicine helps a lot telling yes. me, in, even via Zoom, I can tell what's, you know, 
is sure. very helpful. But how do I help with gut microbiome? Um, more le- recently, I have learned um, about, and through trial and error, also through the last couple of years, where I have had one's a Frenchie too, one of that you know that just can't seem to get to the root of the itching, or it's reduced but it's still there. So, right. um, so I like to recommend two things. Um, one is one is to support the the gut, by, gut microbiome by um, diet, diet modification, helping them to learn to cook. Um, and in Chinese medicine, I've always was a raw food advocate, but I'm leaning a little bit more for sustainability reasons, um, meat and for um, to, to a cooked diet um, for right. dogs and cats. And I see a lot of older animals and so they just do better on, right. on, on a cooked diet. But so the plant fiber is a prebiotic. It supports the uh, bacteria in the gut microbiome, in the gut, um, the bacteria in the gut, in the digestive system, to get it more simplistically. But um, to really check out what's going on in there, um, I recommend a doggy microbiome, uh, doggy biome test, which okay. is a test from a company called Do- Doggy Biome, which is a test to see what bacteria is in the digestive system. And, you know, is it uh for example one dog had all um plant-based digestive or bacteria in there had absolutely no bacteria in there to digest the protein right even though he was on the best diet she was on the best diet you know unable to properly digest it you know is there a balance of bad bacteria pathogenic bacteria like clostridia or not so um i i recommend i more and more i'm recommending let's start with that let's start with this to see what is the gut microbiome um doing what's there what's not and how do we help that um and it's not it's not uh expensive it's i mean okay it's around a hundred dollars but right um based you know it's when you're putting really good supplements in you want to see are they you know a hundred dollars is really not you know all that big of an investment um but anyway so that's where we start generally and then um, talk about, you know, vaccines, lessening vaccines, lessening toxins, lessening um, using spray on your lawns, all of those things that can affect gut microbiome and, you know, all of it does. And, you know, water and are you feed, are they drinking chlorinated water? And right. so, like you said, it's a big picture. It's a, but, it's a huge picture. And I don't, I don't know, like, I love the fact that you have a practice and that you are out there helping all of these people because there's so like, and I think you're at, you know, even though you started it in 2007, you're still at front of the, the movement, I think, um, because people like people just don't think they don't go. Oh my gosh. Like, some anything that goes in the mouth of the animal anything that goes on the animal you know i don't know that people really realize that our skin is our largest organ and so even though we're not the animal is right. ingesting it through the mouth if we spray something on it it's still getting absorbed in and it still can cause damage and Absolutely. um we've been on our own learning journey and you know like I'm all about mineral, 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 and reducing the mycotoxins. And, you know, we now live in Florida. And so we have a completely different environment in that we get hot and humid, we get humid and humid. And so there's (laughs) always mycotoxins, mycotoxins, always mycotoxins. And people go, well, what are mycotoxins? And I go, well, you can't avoid them. And I explain it as, do you know how to make sourdough? Do you know how to make a sourdough starter? Yeah, I, yes. Yeah. So you basically take flour and water, right? And you mix it up and then you stick it on your counter, depending on where you live and the season, and you yeah. leave it sit there and all the bacteria from the air, it will ferment and yep. make 
a sourdough starter that has a yep. naturally occurring yeast in it. Yep. Those are mycotoxins, folks. So if, you know, like, so for us, like people go, oh, well, you know, my dog's outside or, you know, my horse always has this in the summertime. I go, well, that's because there's more mycotoxins in the air and they're exposed and you're not supporting the immune system and the gut in order to get the toxins out. Or the, or the immune system via the gut. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, and not, you know, less processed, too much processed food. The horse industry is infamous for processed, you know, complete oh. cheese. You know, right. it's, it's horrible. It's, it's, you know, I, and then, you know, you get horses that they're so, they so are used to the processed feeds that's when you do a whole food nutrition or dogs too, or cats, right. they don't, you know, they're like, well, they don't even recognize that as food, unfortunately. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, you know, that's, that's why I do a lot of coaching, but just the transitioning, you know, just the transition of getting a dog or a cat or and um, horses, not so much now, but horses to whole food nutrition, because that's, you know, that's the key. That's the root. Right. So, right. It all yeah. starts with food. And Matt, imagine that. <laughs> imagine that. Yeah, I went. There's a woman here in Wisconsin, Linda Conroy. She's a herbalist and I love her logo it's what if nutrition works what if nourishment works you know that oh. you know people are so afraid to what if it works what, what if it you know works? what what do we, what have we got to lose you know and she's right. she's very much into foraging and um cooking with um you know whole foods foraged right. raised whole food and what if it works you know and i just right. love that because that's that's the first key, the first, I don't want to say battle, but the first, maybe one of the biggest um, hurdles oh. I, I occur that I with, with is, is the hydrolyzed food diets that the vets yeah. recommend, you know, and, yeah. and, and that they won't, they won't or don't recognize that that's not food. That, you know, right. yes, it can take care of the symptoms, but it's not food. Ah, and I yeah. look at food. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I love that. And I'm assuming then that you incorporate a lot of the uh, TCM into the food diet, like whether they, you know, yep. if they're experiencing damp heat, you're obviously not going to make a recommendation from a food perspective that's going to exacerbate that you're right going to balance that out and that right. in and of itself is a whole science and yeah whatnot yeah. and that's where i start i mean that's where i start yeah. always with diet and quite honestly mostly if people aren't willing to um and and i went the first time i talked to people you know i, I re we really need to look at changing the diet we really you know because I, I, we probably won't see the change the benefits of or what you're hoping to see if we if you're not willing to at least you know move towards and you know cooking and, and i want to say at least cooking but move towards cooking a whole right. and, and, and people think it's a big deal but once they get going on it they yep. almost all say it's not but and so you know, I'm like, are you with me? Are, are you really? And, and especially when it comes back to the itching, they've right. been going through this for so long with these dogs and they've been seeing nothing. And they're, you know, on prednisone on and off or they're on Apoquil on and off or, right. you know, and they're yeah. like, yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. I was like, Correct. okay, let's go then. Yes. Yes. Correct. So, be yeah. Yes. Yeah. Be because it's not, you know, a lot of people don't equate, like I equate energy, anything that requires effort at all. And even so much as people, you know, because we cook for our dogs. And so yeah. um, people go, yeah. well, how do you have time for that? And I go, well, here's the deal. I don't have time to call the vet every three weeks because my dog is itching. I don't have time to run them to the vet every month. I don't have time to go get a prescription. I don't have time to put salve on them. I don't have time for all of that. And so if you take all of the time that you spend trying to um, mitigate the symptoms, 
Yeah. You could have cooked them a nice, beautiful meal, meal. that is a yeah. lot cleaner. And yeah. by the way, it's probably more cost effective than a dog food because I don't know if it you generally tried- is. Yeah, dog food <laughs> lately, but it's not it's not what it used to be. No, uh, well, I haven't. I because I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, people ask me what kind of dry food do you recommend, and I say I don't because I don't recommend dry food, and I and I'm not right. going to spend my time looking into dry food because I don't believe in that. But but then the right. other thing is too, you don't have time to spend working extra to pay for all those things. Correct. You know, the vet, you know? Correct. <laughs> so, well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That yeah. that's just it. It's sort of like people yeah. go, well, you know, I only. I only need my red light or I only need a red light because I have this dog that has this one injury. And I'm like, no, (laughs) yeah, but yeah, but it like, what happens the next time your dog has an injury and now you're going to take all of this time. Whereas it's, you know, the cool thing about red light therapy is it's not, you know, like it's there. Yeah. It's there when you need it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And your new books are so excellent. I mean, you know, I could, even if people don't have the books and maybe I shouldn't be telling you that I do this, but I do copy the pages and I give it to the clients, you know, that have the red lights that don't have them bought the books like here. Okay. Perfect. And look, I'm seeing spleen meridian imbalance this time or are the, you know, stomach meridian imbalance. Here's the points to do, you know, and, and, and so that works out really well too. Yeah. I have a lot of clients who have purchased too awesome. and use it you know on them awesome. no, and, and it's so funny. that i i don't travel without it i don't travel without my red light right so. exactly exactly yeah. so for people that are listening if you could provide our audience two to three tips that they could implement at home what would it be and how would it how would it impact them you know what Donna? i i forgot what i wrote down there <laughs> I was going to uh, print that and my printer's acting up. But No worries, but, honey. Nourishment <laughs> is key. Oh, and we talked about that one. Yep. Nourishment is key. Yep. That's the first one. Yeah. And I, you know, I think reducing, re- oh, I know one of us just spend two, you know, two to three minutes a, a day if you can, or at least a week, just putting down your fo- your phone sitting with your dog or your cat, hopefully outside if you can, and just breathing with them because they're so wanting us to spend spend quality time with them. I mean, real time, not looking at your phone, not walking, not, I mean, and I hear this over and over. I can feel it too, but um, through animal communicators too, that they so want us to just spend some real time with them. So if two to three minutes, just sitting, breathing, touching your your dog and cat you know not thinking about anything and or trying to not think about anything but just connect with their breathing so i mean oh, that's I love that. big. that's so big i mean um which is which is often challenging when you have multiple animals like you and i do but but at least you know when we do when like you know when you're with your horse even before you start brushing you know just a, you know a few moments or of just breathing with them and and right. and so yeah awesome yeah. i love yeah. that i yeah. love that yes yes and you know the other thing that i love is um one of your messages i think is just to be an advocate for your four-legged animals, yes right yes ask yep and i do a great deal of coaching you know because sometimes i have a background in laboratory medicine my college degree was a clinical lab scientist which was called med tech back then um but so i often do recommend people go to have blood work drawn um you know at their vet and for diagnostics but um but then often often they end up with all of these pharmaceuticals that the vet recommends based on what the results were so i help coach them on how to go and just ask for the diagnostic and then, you know, listen to what the vet has to say. And maybe, you know, a pharmaceutical might be the best route at this time, but, you know, let's talk about options. And so, you know, ask questions and um, ask about doing titers and instead of always just vaccinating and, you know, right. ask about alternatives for flea and tick, you know, yeah, yeah. Be, a, yeah. be, be an advocate, be, you know, questions. 
also, um, and it, it's scary for people to um, question the the vet, the authority, right? The, the authority figure, yes. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. And, and so you don't have to question. You don't really have to question. You you know just inquire. I'll, say I'll yeah I'll inquire and say I'll consider it. You know, and you yeah. can always go back and get it. You know. Yeah. 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 Be an advocate. Yeah, that's a big one, um, too. You're right. I love that. Right. I love right. that. Gosh, Deb, um, how can people get a hold of you? So how can people get a hold of you if they have more questions or if they have an animal that they need your expertise on? Because there's a lot of moving parts to a complex dog. I mean, something seemingly sim simple or, you know, just allergies or scratching um, is actually a pretty complex thing. So how can people yeah, get a hold of yeah. you? Um, via my website, debswhisperingtales.com has my contact information on it. That's in the process of being, um, rebuilt for a while now, but I wanted to wait till I was done with my functional medicine coach, um, certification. Awesome. And, um, and so, but the phone is 920- Two two nine eight one two seven. You can give me a call. Um, I prefer calls versus text, please. And um, or my email address Deb Tybert with at, at gmail .com. And, and that's in the D -E summer months. Yep, yep that's D E B T E U B E R T at gmail .com because Deb has right. a Wisconsin accent. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <Okay. laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. And right now in the summer months, I give myself a long weekend, so I I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays in the summer months. Awesome. Good for um, you. So, so yeah, yeah. So you will get a you might get an auto responder, um, but I do. Um, do my best when I get back in the office on Tuesday to give my time to respond right away and to set up. Um, my intention is at some point to get a you know calendar so people can just pick times as the new website comes up. But Perfect. quite honestly, that that may not be up for a bit yet. Yep, that's all right. That's all right. I love it, Deb. Keep doing what you're doing and helping heal the Thank you. You too. animal planet. Um, we, we love catching up with you and yeah. we will catch up with you again sometime soon. So great. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for watching this edition of the tonic health presents health made simple. Don't forget to like share and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for all new photonic health videos.